Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to another edition of Crypt Talk with your favorite host, Ali Hamraj, here on UniTV. We have had an amazing week in professional cricket, which means I have an amazing show for you all today. But before we go there, I would like to take a quick minute and say a big, big thank you to all you out there tuning into the show. You've all shown me and the show so much love by liking and, and sharing these videos. Uh, as well as of the other hosts and their shows. I personally do appreciate it and on behalf of all the other hosts on UniTV I'd like to say thank you again and we appreciate all our fans. Please do continue to like and share our videos and make sure you subscribe to the channel and please post your comments we love hearing from you. Okay back to the show and what a week of cricket we have had. Let's begin with match 42 where the Sunrisers Hyderabad take on the Delhi Daredevils. Now last week if you remember we saw Yuvraj from the Sunrisers walk onto his stumps and this week it's his teammate Deepak Huda who ends up backing up a little too much and helping the bowling side claim his wicket. Now hit wickets used to be a rarity in cricket but with the emergence of 2020 cricket batsmen are constantly finding new ways to score more runs. One of the methods used a lot predominantly now is using the depth of your batting crease to force the bowler to adjust his left. But when you get it wrong, it ends up in a long walk back to the dugout. In the same game, we had, I believe, one of the worst wrongful dismissals so far this tournament has seen. Now, Quinton de Kock, who seemed to be in sublime form, been giving out caught behind. The feeling side all went up instantly thinking he had nudged the ball on its way to the keeper but replays show that the noise was probably the click on the clasp of the helmet as it somehow became unhooked. No matter though, the Daredevils did manage to win with relative ease. Now with that happening twice already, you think the Sunrisers batsmen would have got together for a quick huddle with Warner and their batting coach all going, okay guys, can we all agree that we should be running between the wickets and not onto our wickets? Alright. Well, a few matches later, Captain Warner himself ends up backing up too far and like his teammates before him, helps the opposition with a freebie. Match 44 has the entire cricket world in awe, or should I say, the Virat and A.B. de Villiers show. RCB take on my team of the tournament, the Gujarat Lions, but King Kohli and Amazing AB decided to show everyone what batting really is. So AB joins the King in the middle of the 5th over with Kohli already on 12. Now this is important because you are going to be blown away at the speed this guy accumulates his runs. He doesn't waste any time and opens his account with a boundary. Such was the striking between these two that all you could hear with every shot was the sound of leather hitting the middle of the bat. They both made a mockery of the bowling with Amazing AB bringing up his half century with Kohli still on 43. The next thing you know he scored 50 more runs and raising his bat for his century with Kohli just adding 8 more runs to his total. So it's the 19th over now. AB is on 128 and Kohli on 65 to face mystery bowler Shiva Koshe. This over tally ends up reading like a long distance telephone number with Kohli letting it fly, scoring a 6, 4, 6, 6, 6, and a 2. A total of 30 runs, leaving the mystery bowler mysteriously scratching his own head. Kohli brings up his century in the last over, just before being dismissed, and together these two have set a new record for the highest partnership in the history of T20 cricket, a total of 229 runs. Incidentally, I did some digging, and the second highest partnership stand of 215 is also shared by these two greats set last year at the IPL. Who would have known? You would think that these two were done there, but looks like they had barely begun. Now it's match 48 and RCB have been put into bat to chase a total of 183 set by KKR the innings prior. Gale and Coley come out to bat. Gale also gets in the action with some classic power hitting accumulate a quick 5.49 before losing his wicket. 
In comes AB and these two start at it again, making a mockery of the art of batting. Both of them dispatching the bowlers with such ease and making it look so elegant while doing so. With these two batting like this, even KKR knew that only a miracle would be able to stop them. Both brought up their individual half centuries and completed the game in the 19th over with Kohli and 75 and AB on 59. Now Kohli solidifies his orange cap status, scoring well over 750 runs this tournament with AB moving into second place right behind him. To wrap up, the Aussies list of players leaving the IPL has grown with two more players flying back down under. With John Hastings, brothers Mitch and Sean Marsh, as well as Captain Steve Smith already gone, now being joined by the big show himself, Glenn Maxwell, leaving due to a side strain, and Marcus Stoinis withdraws due to a family issue. In other injury news, a big blow to Pakistan's preparation of their England tour with key leggy Yasser Shah pulling out of the training camp due to injury. Now he will require about four weeks of conservative rehabilitation due to aggravating a previous knee injury, but should be ready for the first test at Lord's beginning July 14th. Yasser shot to fame after becoming the fastest Pakistani bowler to reach 50 test wickets in only 9 matches. His presence in the test side is going to be a serious threat for England, even at home. To wrap up, let's look at some of the upcoming games. We have the IPL coming to an end with the finals to be decided on the 29th of May. Now still a few games before that, but we have the Sunrise of Hyderabad sitting at the top of the table for now. Sri Lanka take on England at home, which also signals the start of the England summer of cricket with Alistair Cook and his men back in action. Now, Sri Lanka have a point to prove, especially after losing key players Sangakkara and Mahela, who announced their retirement from international cricket earlier last year. We also have the ODI Tri-Series between Australia, South Africa and the West Indies to begin on 3rd of June, taking place in the West Indies with the first game at Providence between South Africa and the hosts themselves. Now, injured World Cup hero Mitchell Stark is going to be making a comeback since being ruled out due to injury for a very, very long time. Stark was a key player for Australia in the historic final win against the Black Caps during the ICC World Cup last year. That's the show for today and that's all we have time for. We have tons of exciting cricket coming our way as you can see. So make sure to tune in again, same time, same place, next week, and we shall look at key moments together. Make sure to click the subscribe button, like and share this video on Facebook. Until next week, this is your host, Ali Hamraj, signing off.